low VC, the wax tier. And in this video, I went to the valley, the San Fernando Valley, and I went thrifting, and I went to a bunch of record stores with Greg from the Vinyl Rundown. And that footage you're gonna see later in this video. But first I wanna show you the albums I found. Let's start off first with thrifting. We went to Goodwills, a bunch of them. The first album I found was this one, a minty fresh copy of Rachel and Vilray. Now Rachel is Rachel Price from the band Lake Street Dive. If you don't know Lake Street Dive, do yourself a favor, go listen to them. They're awesome. They're kind of pop, soul, funky, jazz, great, great group. But this album is different. It's very retro, it's very 40s Django Reinhardt guitar-ish with sultry vocals from Rachel Price. And uh, some of the songs have a backing band, but the ones that stand out to me are just them together singing and, and Bill Ray playing guitar. Very Django-y, Django Reinhardt. Um, let me uh, show you what this comes with this because this had everything that it came with it. Um, first, show you the cover. You see it nice there on None Such Records, which is the same label Lake Street Dives on. There you go, don't go close with those songs. There's everyone who played on it and the producer. Um, it came with this great insert of the lyrics and then the other side is a great picture of them having a better time than I am. Um, great album, just sounds great. Their voices together. Let's see if I can get that label on there. It is pink, you can see it. There you go, and the other side is a dark one. Awesome, awesome album. I highly recommend it. I mean, I got it for $2. I think it's like 20 bucks on uh, Amazon. Highly recommend it. It came out in 2018, but um, great. All right, next two. Um, when I was a teen, this was the album to get. These two, these two albums, let's show the first one. Uh, here we listen to the news. There you go, Huey, big giant shot of his head. Picture this, their first big hit album. Uh, again, a minty, fresh copy. There's the back. Um, one, of, My favorite song by Huey Lewis in the News is um, I Hope You Love Me The Way You Say You Do. And if you can go on YouTube and watch them play that live, they do it with the Tower Power horn section. Just a great, great um, song. I know it's a cover of a, a close friend of Huey's. I forget the guy's name at this moment, but it's my favorite song by them. And uh, Do You Believe in Love was the big hit from this album. So let's show you the minty freshness of this one on Clisera, Cl Chrysalis. I almost said something else, you know? The light reflex. There you go. Other side. You can see it there. Caught myself before I said something else. Awesome. All right. So the next one, maybe I'll give you a little sneak peek of it, is for um, sports was between these two albums. And Hip to be Square is on this, which everyone likes that song. Maybe not. And again, another, to show you one side, there you go. Minty Fresh, both of these. Someone was silly to get rid of them. And those were $5 each. I know Greg's complained about the store near him, that's where we went. But $5 each for Minty Fresh versions of those albums is a steal, okay. Next we went to, uh, this was from a record store, which you'll see footage. And I, this is from a YouTube video recommendation um, Larry Cor Coriel is um, a great kind of jazz fusion guitarist. He, he's, through his career, he seemed to be his own worst enemy. He had drug problems. He was originally part of the, you know, Friday Night in San Francisco trio with John McLaughlin. And because of his drug problem, they kicked him out and brought in Al Demiola. I never knew that. I, I just read that. So that was kind of interesting. But this album's pretty good. It's jazz fusion, but it seems to be more on the 
funky side of jazz fusion, soul funky side, but Larry's guitar is very rocky uh, and great. Um, I would say like the songs are very individualized. There's thematically the album doesn't match, but it's still a great listen. And for four dollars on Arista, I think I got a pretty nice um, copy. There was some writing on it that I took out. You can see right there that kind of blotch I used out alcohol to take the writing off. Kind of didn't hurt it that much. But um, the cover, but the album is uh, very good. Plays great. Look on that Arista, Arista record label. Um, I recommend this, especially you could get this for under five bucks. I'd say go ahead and it's a good listen. All right. Next, we uh, went to a record store and they had a bin outside. And then we said, is everything free? And they said, yes. So this was sitting in the bin. Look at that, with the real zipper. But don't don't get your panties in a bunch. It's just the cover. The cover was free. But this is a kind of near mint cover. And it has, like, the original insert in it. Which is nice. So, I'm looking to find a, um... A, uh nice minty copy of the album with a crappy cover because i'm all set to put it in this baby so for free that was awesome okay last two were from my new favorite record store in la i had been there once before but forgot about it but this place is awesome it's the uh cd trader and um it's uh kind of between tarzana and woodland hills in the valley and Trying to complete my Sonny Rollins collection. I found a uh, 1987 digital mastered version of A Night at the Village Vanguard. Now, the thing about this is this has both volume one and two. It's a double gatefold um, version, which I, I really haven't seen. I know that the uh, Blue Note 75, I've only seen, there's only one, I guess it's volume one, and those are digitally remastered, but the pressings are atrocious. People say they sound crappy. But um, this is digital. Let's uh, I put my uh, vinyl storage solution sleeves on here. But um, it's not horrible. For This was uh, 16 bucks. So as a placeholder, but it sounds awesome. There's nice liner notes, the same as the cover. Here's the back on Jazz Heritage, but this was a Man Manhattan Records sub, sub area of uh, Capital Digital by this dude. There you go. But it sounds great, and for $15 again, I'll show you the um, label here, uh, taking it out, Jazz Heritage. Um, great $15. Now, the last one was an album I was looking for, and it is uh, Mal uh, Waldron, Mal 2. Now, this album uh, I knew about because the Electric Recording Company put it out last year for $500, and now it's worth over $800. Um, you know, um, audiophile, um, analog mastered. From the original tapes but this is a german repress a reissue not repress reissue and i have to assume it's digital but it sounds great from 2017 i think this is really the only one you can get unless you find an original pressing i don't think it's been uh put on vinyl be really before the 2017 and obviously the electric but this uh record label from germany go bop Seems to be a little more on the up and up if you go to their website. They do a lot of jazz reissues. Um, but this sounds great. And uh, it's really the only way to get this album on vinyl affordably. It was 25 bucks. Highly recommend it. If you can't get the album, go on a streaming service and listen to it. The great thing about it is the people that are on here with him. Look at those people. Cold Train. Um, actually not on here on the front, well there it is, Jackie McLean, John Coltrane, 
all these guys. It's it's awesome. This is a great album to get. Okay. The, that was a pretty good haul for one day. So stick around. Watch the footage of me flipping through albums and going through a great record store. And until next time, the waxed out. <laughs>